In the next few videos, I'll cover how to work with XML within SQL Server. SQL Server offers a number of tools for working with XML. There are XML data types, XML variables. You can generate XML from your SQL tables, read an XML file into SQL tables. You can even query the XML document to return XML fragments using T-SQL and XQuery. In this video, I'll cover how to generate XML from SQL Server tables. I'll be using the Adventure Work sample database for this demo. To generate XML, use the for XML clause and your select query. For example, I have the products table here. When I run it, I see the results in tabular form. Now let's add the for XML clause with the auto option. Now the results are converted to an XML document. I can view the results by clicking on it. Notice that each product record is contained within a separate product tag. And each of the columns in the table become attributes of this product tag. There are other modes besides auto. There is raw, path, and explicit. I won't be covering all these modes. The auto and the path modes are the most widely used modes. The main difference between auto and path is with auto, the columns of the table become attributes in the XML, as we just saw. While with path, the columns become elements. So if I change the mode to be path and run it again, instead of the columns becoming attributes, they now appear as elements. By default, they are enclosed within row tags. I can change the name of the tag to something else, say product. Now, Management Studio is indicating an error with the second product tag. This is because it's expecting a well-formed XML document. These, however, are just XML fragments. There isn't a root tag enclosing all of this. To add a root tag, we can use the root clause. If we just leave it like this, the tag name will be root by default, but we can name it to something else, say products. And now the entire document is enclosed within the products tag. There may be times when you need to generate XML documents that are more complicated than this. For example, instead of having the product ID as an element under product, you might want to have it as an attribute instead. Or these elements, instead of having them directly on the products, you might want to further group them under another tag, say product info. This can be done by aliasing the column name. So let's close this down and go back to our query. To make a column show up as an attribute, we just need to add in the at sign in front of the column name. So now product ID appears as an attribute instead of an element. To create a new tag hierarchy, add the name of the new tag followed by a slash, and then the column name. So let's add a new tag called product info in front of name, and we'll do that for these next couple as well. And for a modified date, I'm just going to leave that. 
as is. So now the three tags that we modified, they now appear under the product info tag instead of being directly under the product tag. I can also make the name as an attribute of product info by adding the as sign in front of name. So now name becomes an attribute. The for XML clause also supports subqueries. So you can have nested XML output. The example I'll use here is with product and product subcategory. One or more products can belong to a product subcategory. I'll use this query from product. So instead of just showing the product, I want this to be grouped by its subcategory. So to do that, first we need to construct the XML for the subcategory. So it looks like this. And what I want to do now is within the subcategories, place in the appropriate products for that subcategory. Now we add in the code for the product. First, let's alias the product table with a P. And then we need to indicate that the product table joins to the product subcategory based on the product subcategory ID. And PSC is what I've alias product subcategory as. Now the results here looks a little funny. This is because the results of the subquery that comes back, it comes back as a string instead of XML. What we need to do is we need to cast the results of the subquery as an XML data type. And to do that, we can use the keyword type. And now it looks like an actual XML document and the products are nested under their respective subcategories. There's just one more thing I want to quickly show you. The generated XML document can be assigned to an XML variable. We can declare variable X with an XML type. and assign the results of that query to the variable. And let's select that variable to see what's in there. So the results are stored inside the XML variable. So this concludes the tutorial on how to generate XML from SQL tables. The code I've used in this video is available on my blog in case you want to play around with it or use it as a starting point. I'll put a link to it in the video description. Thanks for watching.